Hey everybody, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer, and this tutorial is gonna show you how to sketch a fashion flat on a garment that someone is wearing. So a couple of you have asked me how to draw a garment when it's on a body, and the, the answer is actually really simple. It's the same way you would draw it if it was just a photograph of a flat garment or if you were drawing from scratch, but I wanna show you this example. So here we are in Illustrator. The first thing I'm gonna do is, I've got this image that I just grabbed from the internet, um, so you can get started with whatever image you have or wanna use. In my layers panel, the first thing I'm absolutely gonna do is lock this layer and create a new layer that I'm gonna sketch on. So this, I always do this because it prevents me from accidentally bumping this garment or this image out of place as I'm tracing on top of it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm gonna go through some essentials about using the pen tool. So we will talk through that as we go. I'm not gonna go super, super slow because I've got some other tutorials on this, but I'll definitely talk through some of the tricks with the pen tool as we go. Um, I always sketch without a fill color because otherwise as you sketch, parts of your image and your drawing may get covered up and it's really hard to tell what you're drawing or what you're not drawing and if you blocked something or you can't see something that you've drawn. So I take the fill color off and just working with the stroke color, I'm gonna start at the high point shoulder up here. And I'm gonna drop one single anchor point. And then I'll come over and I'm just gonna trace what I see on this image, okay? So I come over here and I'm just gonna click and drop one anchor point. And then I will come over to the shoulder where the sleeve is and again, click and drop, except I'm gonna click and drag to create a curved path. Now, once I'm done doing that, if I'm in a newer version of Illustrator, I think this was released in CC, maybe CS6, I can't recall, um, I get a preview of what the path is gonna look like. So I can see that there's a curve that's being inherited from the anchor point that I just drew. Now, this is actually gonna work just fine for the rest of this sleeve, but there's times that you're not gonna wanna inherit that, and so we'll get to that when that incident happens. So I'm gonna drop one more anchor point here, and again, I'll come over here and I'll click and drag to get a little bit of a curve. Now here's an example where I don't want that severe curve to happen because it doesn't follow the, the line of the garment. So what I can do is I can hover over this anchor point until I see that upside down carrot top, um, that little V, upside down V shape. And once I see that, I can click on that anchor point. And what it does is it removes that handle that was creating that next curve. So let's scroll down a little bit. I'm actually gonna zoom out one level so I can see this whole thing. And I think you'd probably be able to see a little bit more of the shirt behind her arm. So I'm just gonna kind of use my discretion here to fill this in a little bit more. And I'm just gonna kind of click and drag around the edges of the shirt. Again, if I don't want to inherit this curve, I can hover over the anchor point I just drew until I get that upside down carrot top. And if I want to get rid of that curve, I can click once to delete that. In this portion here, the bottom hemline, I actually want to keep it because it's going to help create a nice soft swoop at the bottom of the hem instead of having a weird V type of shape happening. So I will, again, just click and drag and I'm kind of freehanding this at some point just to give it a little bit more of the shape that I think it might have. Now again, I did not want to inherit that curve because there would be a sharp curve at the um, corner of that sleeve, so I'll click on that one anchor point until that goes away. Click and drag. And I don't think that I want that one either, so. All right, now to finish this off, Finish the neckline. Now this curve that I'm inheriting for the neckline actually looks really nice. The last thing I wanna do is right up here at the high point shoulder, I wanna make sure when I hover over this anchor point that I see the circle icon appear, okay? The circle icon tells me that I'm gonna be closing the path and then that will be one continuous outline for the entire garment. So the couple things you may have noticed so far, right? We had to pay attention if we wanted to um, start uh, if we did not want to get a curve coming off of the path as we were drawing, we had to hover over the anchor point until we saw that little V. And now we hover over the anchor point until we see that circle. So pay attention to the little icons that show up next to the pen tool because these tell you what the tool is gonna to do. So the circle is telling me that if I click here, I'm gonna get a closed path. So once I've clicked and grabbed my selection tool and I can see 
that now this is one continuous closed path. I didn't want to move that. I just wanted to move it to show you. So I'm going to do Command or Control Z to move that back. Now let's go ahead and draw a few more details. Um, and I'm going to draw some of these with the pencil tool and you'll see why in a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this path is not selected because if I start drawing with it selected, I might actually affect the path and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click anywhere off of it to deselect it and then I'm going to grab the pencil tool. So the pencil tool draws a little bit more organically than the pen tool does and you literally just click and drag. So starting at this underarm point, I'm going to click and drag to simulate the armhole seam, right? And then there's some movement lines here in the sleeve where it's kind of getting wrinkled under her arm that we could also draw. So I will click and drag to kind of draw those. And we can come back later because we might want to make these a thinner stroke weight because they're a little bit heavy and maybe make them a lighter gray color. Um, but let's just get all the style lines drawn. So again, I can draw the armhole seam here. And you could draw this with the pencil tool, excuse me, the pen tool if you wanted. It's really up to you, whatever you want to do. All right, and then maybe we want to draw, and again, we're going to change these later, but maybe we want to draw some movement lines here and perhaps over here. And then the last thing we might want to do is draw some stitch lines around the neck the sleeve and the hem. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm gonna grab my pen tool and on the sleeves, I'm just gonna click here and click here to draw that path. And I'll go ahead and we'll change these to dashed lines later. I wanna disconnect from this path because now I wanna draw this seam line over here. So I'm gonna hit the enter return key and it disconnects me from that path. Now I can come over here. A couple things I wanna be careful as I hover over these paths, you'll notice the icon next to the pen tool changes to a slash. The slash means I'm going to actually be connecting to that path. That is not what I want. I want to draw a new path from scratch that emulates the seam line on the sleeve. So what I want to make sure is I see the asterisk icon next to the pen tool. The asterisk means I'm going to be drawing a path from scratch. So just make sure wherever you click, you watch that icon. Okay, so I want to make sure I still see the asterisk. And the same is true if I come over here and I hover and I see this sort of square shape with a line going through it, that means I'm gonna to connect to that path. I don't wanna do that. I wanna come all the way over here and just be able to draw that path all by itself. Again, hit the return key to disconnect from that. And let's go ahead and add the seam line at the bottom. Now, instead of drawing that path from scratch, I wanna show you guys a cool trick. I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. This allows me to select an individual anchor point or an individual path as opposed to the entire object. So I'm gonna hover over the hemline here and I'm gonna select this anchor point in the middle. By selecting this anchor point in the middle, I automatically get everything to the right of it and everything to the left of it when I copy and paste this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. With just that one anchor point selected, I'm gonna choose Command or Control C and then Command or Control F. And what Command or Control F does is it pastes it in front. This is as opposed to Command or Control V, which just pastes it in the center of your screen at that given point in time. So Command or Control F, and then just using the arrow key on my keyboard, I will just nudge that up a little bit to create the hemline, uh, the seam line for the hem of my garment. Now let's go ahead and create the neckline here. So again, I'm gonna select this anchor point in the middle, Command or Control C to copy it, Command or Control F to paste it in front. I will nudge this down and it doesn't come out perfect. So we're just gonna kind of wing this here. I'm gonna grab this anchor point and I'm gonna pull this over here and I might need to adjust the curve of these a little bit by just grabbing the handle, which is this handle that comes off the anchor point. That's what controls the curve. I'll come over here with this one and again, I'll just adjust this handle a little bit to adjust that curve so that it fits around the neckline nicely. Now let's go ahead and do this. Let's come over to our layers panel. I'm just gonna turn the t-shirt off and you can see what we've got is a decent start. Some of these lines look really funky. As I said to you earlier, we're gonna change those. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I'm gonna to select all these paths that I created to be these sort of like highlight and low light lines. 
And let's go ahead and do a couple things. The first thing is I wanna change these to a really light gray. So I'm gonna double click on the stroke and we'll change these to a really light gray. And the other thing that we actually might wanna do is apply a brush to these. So you can get some really nice texture using brushes. Um, if you don't see a brush that you like, just click the drop down here and we can look at, um, I really like the artistic chalk, chark, and chalk charcoal and pencil brushes for drawing um, sort of these highlights and lowlights on my garments. And once we select that, I know that doesn't look good at all. We're gonna change the opacity. So up at the top here, I can drop the opacity down, probably something like 10%, um, something really low, maybe 10's a bit low, but let's take a look and see what we get. And then if you don't like the size, if it's a bit too heavy, you can change the stroke weight. So I'll drop this down to 0.5. So I think that looks a little bit better. I don't really love the way those came out, um, but it kind of emulated some of the movement we had in the original garment. So I'm gonna leave them. The next thing I do is I'm gonna select the neckline and the hemline on the sleeve and the bodice. And I'm gonna come over to my stroke panel. I wanna change this to a dash stroke. And if I zoom in really close, that is not looking like a very good size. So I'll go ahead and change this to be something a little more realistic, the dash and the gap size. The other thing I like to do with my stroke, um, my seam lines is change the cap to a round cap. So that just rounds the edge of this. I also might wanna change this to maybe 0.5 so it's a little bit finer on my sketch. So now we've got a shirt that's looking much, much better. The last thing we might wanna do is add the back. Now we don't see that on the model, but there would be the back in reality. So let's just go ahead and do that quickly. I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna start this at the high point shoulder here and this high point shoulder here and I'll just click and drag to draw a path. Now that's not what I wanted because I want it to match the outline of the rest of the garment. So I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool, hotkey is the letter I. Once I drew that, that path is still selected. What I wanna do is I wanna pick up the attributes of this other, uh, this other path here. So I'll hover over this path and that will take the attributes of the path that I hover over and it will apply it to the path that I had selected, okay? The last thing I wanna do is I wanna create a seam line on the inside back neck, which we would see. So with this path selected, I'll do Commander Control C, Commander Control F to paste it in front, nudge that down a few notches and then I can pick up the attributes of the stitch line I already created. Instead of coming over here and changing the dash line and changing the size of the stroke weight, I will grab my eyedropper tool and I will just pick up the attributes of this stitch line here. So now you can see we've got um, a nice t-shirt drawn with some nice organic movement since we drew it on a model. And so that's really how you go about drawing this. There's some winging it where you kind of have to draw stuff you don't see, but overall you can just trace on top of this and then on top of the, the sketch that you see using the pen and or pencil tool and then change the stroke weights and attributes to emulate the details that you're trying to convey. So thanks so much for watching guys. My name is So Heidi and I am part of the Successful Fashion Designer Network. You can find more out about that and everything that I do on my website. I would love to have you on my email list. I share tons of tutorials and downloads there that you do not see here on YouTube or anywhere else. So go ahead and check that out and sign up at SoHeidi.com. Thanks again, you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.